trying to give you some more information about the Girl X Child Programme um, and sort of how your business can benefit and how you can get involved. I know there's been some information passed out sort of publicly through various press releases and media and radio and things. Um, and some of you are already involved in our work in Nurture Lakeland through the Fresh Air 3 campaign. Um, but today is trying to kind of bring that all together and really give you guys a chance to think about actually what can I do in my business to kind of raise awareness of sustainable travel and make sure that we're, we're kind of at the forefront of making the most of getting involved in this campaign. So we've got a few different people from the Gertrude Programme here to find the information for you. Um, for the Go Lake Travel Programme. So my role is more to do with kind of the administration of the programme, ensuring that all the reporting is in place and the funding is up. So coming on today, we need to just give you an overview of the programme, the background to it, where our funding comes from, how we're structured, and what we are hoping to deliver this year that you'll see on the ground. So what's it all about, Go Lake Travel? You can read our bid, there's lots and lots of words about it, but it basically boils down to this. We want to get more visitors into the Lake District, travelling around with, by sustainable means, so walking, cycling, using the bus, using the train, using the, the lake transport, having a great time, having a great visitor experience. What we don't want is lots of queues of traffic of people trying to get in the Lake District, just driving aimlessly around. That's what we're trying to avoid. So we want more of the birds, less of the seconds. What is Go Lake Travel? Well, basically, it's a new programme of transport measures aimed at transforming the travel behaviour of visitors to the central and southern Lake District. Uh, we're funded to run until the end of March 2015. We're funded by the Department of Transport through the local Sustainable Transport Fund. And the whole programme is being delivered in a three-way partnership between the Lake District National Park Authority, Cumbria County Council and Cumbria Tourism. <coughs> In terms of the background to how we've got to where we are today, the government announced its intention to have the local sustainable transport fund. Um, it was very much aimed at local transport authorities, so people like the county council actually delivering sort of behaviour change, travel behaviour change. Um, the Lake District National Park saw an authority saw an opportunity and it approached Cumbria County Council and they put together a partnership bid which was sort of very different to the original aspirations of LSTF. It's saying the problem here is visitor travel. We want to tackle that and we want to change the behaviour of visitors to the Lake District. So we put in the joint bid. Back in July last year, um, they were informed that they were successful. And we were told that we could claim up to 4.89 million of the Department for Transport funding over four years. Um, but as part of that, we would also be seeking an additional two million in local contributions. And those local contributions are either money in terms of other funding, or uh, in time, or sort of in-kind contributions by partners. And the question I get asked quite often is why visitors? Well, quite simply, because their travel accounts for three quarters of the total Lake District carbon emission. You won't be able to see the detail of this pie chart. But basically, this blue segment here, that's resident, that's the resident carbon emission. These two sections, <coughs> red and green, that's all visitor, and visitor travel is a good chunk of that. The second part of why visitors, well, we all know about this, is because they are essential to the economy of the local area. Um, we've calculated that roughly every 1% increase in visitor numbers to this area that we're working in could generate another 100 full-time covered jobs and nearly 7 million in tourism revenue. So it's quite important, and that's the reason it fits really well the local sustainable transport fund kind of objectives, which are all about creating growth and also achieving low carbon. In terms of how we structure, and this is quite important, the programme itself is a collection of projects. When we talk about the programme, basically that boils down to me, on the, the programme person. There isn't a huge team of people waiting in the background to leap into action. What we have got are nine individual projects that will deliver schemes on the ground. If I just run through them quickly, the first project is all about improving passenger transport. So it's about ensuring that bus services and routes are meeting the needs of visitors, putting on new services where we think there's potential for them to come commercial. Um, it's all about the water transport services, improving and making 
new routes or, or new objectives on wind and air and competence. It's about how people move around the lake district. I mean, the term that you'll hear quite often if you get involved with air lake travel is the term of hub, which is where people make transport decisions. They're quite familiar with the idea of a hub in terms of their bus station. So, you know, you see that as a transport hub. But this is also saying, well, people make travel decisions at various points throughout the day in their journeys. So it might be when they stand in front of the car park machine and they make a decision about what length of ticket am I going to buy. Am I going to stay here for 20 minutes? Am I going to stay here for four hours? These are also pubs that we need to present information at and start changing people's behaviour. There's also a whole kind of raft of things there to do about smart information, about how we present that form of information and using technology, and <coughs> electronic technology. <coughs> the second project we have is improving traffic management, and that's looking at kind of visitor parking, how we might manage visitor parking better, how we can find people to the right locations, and again, how we might be able to do that in an electronic smart form. The third project, which might seem strange for a sustainable transport project, is actually about car hire, but it's about car hire low emission cars. So we're talking electric cars, we're talking low emission vehicles. And we want to do this in a flexible way so people can actually pay as they drive per hour. So we're encouraging them saying, yes, you might need to use a car for part of your journey in the Lake District, but you don't have to bring your own car. You can come here, you can hire one for an hour, you can go and make your journey, and then you're free to go off and do all the wonderful things you want to do by bus or walking or cycling. Project 4 is about smart ticketing. Um, we've got the Go Now Lake smart card, which people can purchase and that includes bus travel and also some travel on Windermere Lake cruises. Uh, we want to kind of expand that, you know, make the offer more attractive, bring in some other partners as well, and uh, make it the kind of must-buy ticket for the Lake District. Project 5, improving the cycle network. That's all about new and improved cycle routes, so at the moment we're working on Windermere West Shore, um, looking at making up a whole network of cycling, so addressing the gaps in the network and improving it. But it's also about signing and mapping, and again, sort of getting the information across to the visitor. Linked to that is the Cycle Hire Network, which is Project 6, which is all about making sure that people can hire bikes when they get here, and how that is delivered. We've already got sort of a basic network of commercial hire points, we want to encourage that network to grow. So we're looking at sort of helping hubs set up with Cycle Hire in the first days, so giving them a bit of support in how they do that, taking a little bit of the risk out of it for them, also looking at working with local communities and community-led cycle hire. Um, linked to that, there's a whole lot of, of work on actually marketing that, some festival work that's going on, that kind of thing. Project 7, Transport Information, kind of the real cross-cutting one, because we're looking at the information that people need about their travel and their decisions, looking at destination guides, travel information points and materials. And then Project 8, Marketing Travel Around the Lake District, which hopefully this month you'll be hearing a lot, lot more about, and I won't steal Jenny's thunder. Um, but yeah, that's basically about the visitor focused branding, about how we get the message across to the visitors, and tell them what's on offer here, how they can travel around, and to kind of start to convince them to change their behaviour. The final project, which is Marketing Travel to the Lake District, so that's influencing how people will get here in the future, that doesn't start until year three. So you've got a little way to go with that one. So basically that's nine projects, and when you talk about wanting to get involved with the Old Lakes Transport Travel Programme, this is how you can. <coughs> if you have an area of work that you think fits under one of those projects, then my recommendation would be to, to contact me, I'll put you in touch with Project Lead, and then you can take it from there. So that's how we're structured. Where are we operating? Well, we're kind of central and southern lake district. So, Kendall just falls slightly outside, but you can see we're going up Windermere Stave, we're up to Grasmere, and we take the lakes of Windermere and Coniston, come down the other side of Coniston, Broughton and Burnett, and down towards Milnthorpe. And that green shaded area is really the area in which we are operating. We are funding some things that run outside of that area where they would help with the travel aspect of it. So if we can prove that um, by putting on a service, say, up to Windmatter, um, we can stop people driving up to Windmatter, then we can justify it. But that's the main area in which we're working. So what will you see this year? Well, this month, hopefully, you'll see lots of this, which is our, our customer consumer-facing branding, a whole lot of campaigns that will be going on. 
I think they come up with a really, really strong brand. It's attractive. <coughs> pretty much says exactly what we want. Drive less, see more, let's look up to the eight district. Absolutely dead clear. Bit one still does what it does. Bit one of the clean does what it does. Um, there's a whole lot of stuff coming on. This campaign will launch on the 22nd of July with the Go with the Bike, Go Walk, Go Lake Festival. There'll be four weeks of activities and competitions, information stands, uh, radio and post campaigns, press campaigns, and sort of three big things coming on. So hopefully we'll start to generate that real interest in the visitors. They'll start to get to hear about the uh, whole <coughs> dry <coughs> lesson kind of approach to things. In terms of a selection of things that you're going to see on the ground this year, and this is just really a, a kind of taster of what we're up to, we've got the bike bus, and what we've done here, we've given a grant to Stagecoach to enable them to actually convert a vehicle to carry bicycles inside the bus, and it can carry 12 bikes. It's running between um, mainly Windermere and Windwater, but some journeys do extend down to Kendall in recognition that a lot of people travel from that area up to Windwater. And basically, you can buy a ticket for yourself and a ticket for your bike, and off you go. Um, we're also looking at maybe promoting that as a way of doing some linear rides, um, perhaps cutting out some of the, the nastier sort of A-road sections, which people don't want to cycle. We've also put on some new bus services in terms of certain new places. So there's an X30 and an X33, and I will get them wrong way around, so I won't pretend to know, but one of them goes Grisdale, Tarn Howe, Stafford Plate, that area. And the other one goes over to um, Ravenbrook. And we're also paying for some additional journeys on the 516, the Langdale bus. Uh, we had feedback that was saying it finished too early in the afternoon for walkers to get back, so people were put off using it, so we've actually paid some extra journeys. That's just services in year one. We'll be reviewing these at the end of the season, seeing how they perform. And some may continue next year, but others we might look for new opportunities for bus services. This one, which hopefully will come on stream end of this month, or the beginning of August, is the electric car hire. Um, still very innovative at this stage, but these are the vehicles that we're currently looking at the first year launch of the electric car hire. They're a Renault Twizy. Uh, very well, rather fun to drive. They seat two, one front, one back, all electric. Um, and what we really want to start with this is kind of a bit of a, a bit of bling. Um, yes, they're very into it, yes, they look very funky. Next year we'll be expanding the fleet into uh, other electric cars that are sort of four-seater, more practical. But this is sort of our launch vehicle for this year. We're hoping to have six of these based at locations across the area, and they should become operational, I'd say, hopefully in this The other things we're doing that you probably see on the ground is supporting the expansion of the electric bike network. Um, so we're helping them with trying to get new points in the area. And we're also trying to establish these sort of conventional bike fire hubs. We've got a couple that are coming on stream this summer. We've got here at Brockhole, um, National Trust at Slow Ray, and also a community led one at Portshead. Um, in addition to that, we've got a pool of bicycles that we are going to be offering to organisations, businesses, they can hire those to run their own guided rides or to sort of try out cycle kind of activity for their guests. And that seems to be at the moment, there'll be more details probably towards the end of the summer. And there is lots more. Um, Go Now Lakes ticket, that's obviously on sale, it's expanded this year. Um, we've got the work that's just started, I think last month, on Windermere West Shore, creating a cycle route. But that's only part of a whole load of cycle routes that hopefully we'll be creating over the next couple of years. Uh, there'll be a new website, there's new marketing and leaflets. Um, let's get a sample of the cycle leaflet outside. There's obviously the Seymour Lake District that's full right and that's that Nurture Lake is developing. And then there's a whole package of industry training for tourism and transport. It's a real variety of activities. All going on under the Go Lakes Travel <coughs> Programme banner. If you want to get involved um, <coughs> and you're not sure how, I'd say the first thing is to contact myself and I can put you in touch with the relevant project. We can chat through it and put you in touch with the relevant project. Um, the other thing that I wanted to kind of flag up, last year we had Go Lakes Travel Small Grant Scheme, which enabled businesses to bid up for £5,000 towards sustainable transport, businesses and organisations. 
we're hoping to hoping to reopen that this summer. It'll probably be in August time. It'll probably have a window for applications for about six months. So look out for that. We will be holding future stakeholder events. We'll probably hold a big event in the autumn sometime. We haven't quite finalised the date for that yet. And the other thing we're hoping to launch in the next couple of weeks is like an e-newsletter. It'll be a very basic bullet points about each of the projects, what they're up to, what they've done last month, what they're coming to do this month. And we'll be setting that up. So if you're interested, just contact me and I'll make sure you're on the distribution list. So that's promoting sustainable transport around the Lake District Travel Area and also promoting sustainable transport to the area. Although Claire was saying that aspect of the programme comes online a little bit later because we want to make sure that the infrastructure up here is better developed before we start promoting people to actually arrive without a vehicle. Um, before I start, I just want a quick word in terms of why promoting and marketing sustainable travel is a good thing for your business. There is the obvious one that generally it is better for the area. The green impact and the negative impact that visitors are having on the area, as you can see from Claire's presentation, is quite significant. So reducing that is a good thing to do. And it's a very good thing in terms of sort of your consumer policies and your awareness, your social policies as a business. But on the other hand, there are also, are also advantages to individual businesses. And I think at the moment it's quite a key time for looking into this because travel is becoming more and more expensive option for people. And so having other means of getting around which are potentially more affordable because the cost of fuel is going up, the cost of car tax and everything is going up, it is an advantage. And it also does open you up to other new markets that might not have been able to get to you before. If you think a lot of people down in London don't have cars, so to a certain extent, you know, if they don't keep a vehicle, then if you can promote your product or your B&B, your attraction as somewhere that they can get on a train, get up to the Lake District and then get right to your door sustainably without the use of a vehicle or by hiring a vehicle up here, there are advantages to that and it does open you up to a slightly new market. So there are good reasons for actually being involved in sustainable travel promotion. I'm just going to give you a little bit more information about what we're doing to try and raise awareness this year. It's the first year of the campaign um, and you saw some of the branding that was developed. The two key marketing aims for this year are to raise visitor awareness about car free and car share travel options, so not completely car free, and also to nudge visitors to change their behaviour, their travel behaviour around the centres and the Lake District. Our other key aim for this year is not to overpromise and underdeliver because we're very aware that for some people it's just not feasible for people to access you via sustainable transport method. So what we're looking at at the moment, whilst there's a lot of infrastructure being developed, is just trying to get people to take one day as part of the large break as a car free day as part of their holiday. Because if you look at the total number of visitors that we get, just having one car free day as part of your break can actually have a really big impact. So the focus of the campaign at the moment is for one car free day. Um, the branding has been developed by Cactus Creative and um, there's quite a lot of um, focus groups and things that went into this. Um, we looked at the proposition and again, just a little bit here, what do we want people to do? We want people to drive less, go car free. What are the benefits to see more and enjoy more? And why should they do it to help look after the Lake District? Um, after the research, we found the best focus was actually on the benefits to people. So what's in it for them? It's to see more, um, which as you can see from the branding, that's where the focus is. The underlying message is still there to look after the Lake District, and we've got the whole drive less thing in there just to get people thinking. Um, all this branding is available to download from cumbriatourism.org or if you contact myself. There's a series of brand guidelines that have been developed, so if anybody wants to use it as part of their own marketing, you can do. Um, there's a lot of different suggestions for colourways, fonts and everything in there. Um, we've also got a corporate sign-off which goes with the consumer facing consumer branding. The corporate sign-off is just because there are so many funding bodies and people involved in this project, rather than having to put logos from everybody all over the marketing material, it just makes sense to have a one sign-off for everybody. We've commissioned some new photography. Um, because we do find that a lot of photography that's out there in stock shops, they don't really cover off sustainable transport modes. Um, we're also, with this campaign, looking at targeting three market segments or three key types of visitors to the area. So we're looking at all scenery watches, um, which tend to be your old people, the walkers who come as groups <coughs> or as couples. We're looking at wilderness couples, who tend to be 
anything from sort of 30 up to about 60 um, who generally do come as couples to the area. We're also looking at familiar families and other families that tend to visit quite regularly and have been to the area before. Um, so the, the photography that we shot does try to reflect the three key target audiences. The majority of the stuff here is from the first shoot, so we're a little bit uh, underrepresented on the old TV watches and some of the other modes of transport. But uh, the second shoot, we're just about to sign off the shots from. We're just taking some more of the nice buses. Um, again, any of the photography, that's all available for people to use. So if you're looking for something for your own literature or for your website and you want to illustrate sustainable travel, just contact myself and I'll give you access to the library. Um, the library will be going online through Cumbria Tourism's um, membership and the library that they've got there and we're going to give people access to it who aren't Cumbria Tourism members as well but we're just working on that at the moment um, but I can give you access to it in the meantime before it goes live. Um, so the first big thing that you're probably going to see from this project is the awareness campaign. That kicks off this month um, so you should hopefully start seeing things that are about and drag to see more branding on. We've got a PR campaign which is underlying everything, which again you might be able to see some things in local media referring to the project which has come from part of the PR campaign. Um, we've got a lot of competitions running through that as well, um, which are just some things that we can try and generate some interest through the media about if we run a really good competition um, because we don't have that many things launching this year, it's just another way of getting media attention. Um, we've got a training programme um, which has been done on our behalf by CAT. Is that taking notes? <laughs> um, so I'll go into that in a little bit more detail. We've got travel planning. Um, we're working with five key attractions at the moment and we're hoping to, that's a pilot project, we're looking at rolling that out, but we've also got some toolkits which I'll touch on later. And then um, we've got our challenge week, which is coming up on the 22nd of July and we're on to 29th of July, so technically it's not quite a week, it's actually a little bit longer. Um, and during the challenge week, it's basically another thing to kick the whole campaign off and just to raise awareness about car-free travel or sustainable travel options in the Lake District. We'll be having some pop-up travel information centres around key transport hubs, so places where people do tend to swap transport modes and things like that. Um, we're looking for people who are interested in providing offers or discounts or running any events or already doing something sustainable that we can promote as part of that week. And during that week we're going to be challenging visitors who we come across at all various sorts of things to try and take a car free day as part of their break during that week. We've got some marketing communication, most of which will launch this week. Um, the driver Seymour leaflets, I think you've seen out in the foyer. If you want any of those, they're going out through um, distribution, but if you want any, you can contact myself and we'll make sure you've got stock. Um, we're going to be doing paint cards and a whole toolkit for B&Bs and attractions to you. Um, we're also going to have some bubble line media, so we've got radio advertising, which will be kicking off next week, I think is the first week for it. That's going to be on Bay Radio, so we get people who are here on holiday, but also people who are likely to be day trippers to the area. Um, we've got some some signs and banners going up at Window Main Station, Oxen Home Station, and then Stagecoach Outlet in Kendall. And we've also got some online advertising, but we're having some mega rears for the buses and some street liners for the buses as well, which is what you can see down here. So you should hopefully start to see some public transport modes promoting themselves. Going around the <coughs> Um, we're developing a new section to the travel section of the Go Lakes website. Rather than doing the whole new Go Lakes travel website, we've decided to keep it as part of the Cumbria Tourism's website because their travel section already gets an awful lot of traffic and quite frankly it did need improving for the sustainable travel mode. So what we're looking at is producing a microsite which will sit within Go Lakes but is also accessible by www.golakestravel.co.uk. That will add to the, the landing page and it should give people, it will give people that information about getting here, information about getting around when they are here and it's also involved a lot of new de developments across the Cumbria Tourism Go Lake site. So there will be much more integrated travel information across the rest of the site. So if you're visiting an attraction or a B&B, there will be a little button you can click which will then give you travel information around the area and how to get there. Um, we're enriching a lot of the content, um, we've got quite a few new developments, we've got an interactive map where people can put different modes of transport on and they can put the postcode of where they are on. So if they're looking at staying somewhere, they can put themselves as a point on the map and then they can flick on train routes or walking routes 
we just picked a few key walking routes and a, key, a few key cycle routes this time. But they can look at cycle higher points and put those on the map to see where their nearest cycle higher point is. And um, this is going to take over the old travel section of Cumbria Tourism's website. Um, so it will focus on the southern and central lakes, but it will also include all the other areas as well. Because from a visitor's point of view, it doesn't make much sense if the only information we provide is within this transport area. Right, so how can the industry get involved? Well, first of all, we do have the training courses that we're running. Um, these are going to come online, I think, September time. They're likely to be actually be up and running, so you should hope to hear about them towards the end of the summer. Um, we're looking at two types of training. Um, training for customer facing staff, um, which will primarily focus on providing business travel information, improving product knowledge for consumer facing staff in terms of what's on their doorstep, um, and talking people through how they can develop travel plans and using the travel plan toolkit that's going to be developed. Um, we're looking at splitting those down, so there'll be half day workshops and full day workshops. There'll be full day workshops for the transport industry as well, which will be slightly different, and we're hoping to get some of those accredited. Um, but the accommodation and the visitor attractions will kind of be specific, and we'll try and keep them specific to your area as well. And um, there's a marketing workshop that's going to be happening as well, which will just talk you through how you can integrate the marketing tools that we're providing into your marketing and the benefits of doing that. Um, again, we're looking at charging potentially for those from about £20 per person. Um, if you want any more details, if you contact us, the contact details are just on the bottom there, but if you contact myself, I can pass those on to you. Travel planning, as I said earlier, we're working with five attractions at the moment, developing travel plans for those attractions. Um, but that's more of a pilot to see how that's going to work and if we can roll that out further in future years. So we potentially will be looking for more people to work with in future years. But we're also looking at developing a toolkit which will be available to download from CumbriaTourism.org. Um, I know a lot of you will probably already do your own travel plans and it's something that you've got covered. Um, but for anybody who hasn't, sorry, looking at reviewing it, it will just be a toolkit with some hints and tips of how you can go about that, the sort of things you need to think about, and just talking you through the process. And help on using that toolkit will be part of the training programme too. We have a marketing toolkit that will be downloadable from the same place. Um, there's quite a lot of things involved in that. We've got a potential bedroom browser insert that you can print out and put if putting your own bedroom browsers if you supply those. And um, we've got web ads and buttons if you want to add something to your own website. And um, we're going to have posters which are going to be area specific. Um, so the posters will have they'll focus on sort of key towns and villages. You can pick the place that's nearest to where you're based. And it will just give a brief overview of some suggestions of different things that people can do from those areas. And the map here just shows the nearest places, uh, the nearest sort of modes of transport from those places. So there's just a little key on the map which will show you sort of whether it's got electric bike hire, normal bike hire, boat crossing, so the things that they could do from the doorstep. Um, we've also got some tank cards that people can put in their room. Um, it gives just a little bit more information about the programme and why we're doing it and where to go for more info. But it's more just to get people, when they arrive, if they're sitting in their rooms thinking about planning the rest of their journey and looking at the different activities they can do, it's just to get them thinking about how they actually get there. Um, we have got a lot of activity going on on the PR side of things. We're looking for anybody who would be interested in being involved in press trips. Um, we've had a couple already, we've had Green Traveller interested, we've had Witch Mountain Bike Magazine interested, and we're talking to quite a few people at the moment as well. So if you're interested in offering anything or getting involved in those press trips, let me know. And if we think there's anything that's going to be relevant to you, we'll pass the contact on. Um, competitions, we've got a Carfree Family Competition running at the moment, which I think some of you are involved in. Um, we're taking part in the Peter Rabbit Windermere Relay, which you might have heard of, which is the Windermere Super 6 attractions are running. Um, they're offering, for people who visit all six attractions or go to all six attractions over the summer, they can get a ticket stamp, and it's kind of um, based on the Olympic theme, so that they can get a ticket stamp for each of the attractions, and when they hand it back in, they get an opportunity to win a prize, which is sort of the prize draw. We're adding to that bonus pot, so if people actually travel around all those attractions sustainably, they can enter for an extra prize, which is the Green Travel Prize. Um, we've got social media competitions, so um, photography competitions, things like that, moving online at the moment. 
encouraging people to post pictures taken from the same all over travel. <coughs> and we've got a treasure hunt competition which is going to be coming up over the summer. Um, we are looking for prizes or anything like that that we can contribute to all those. If anybody's interested in getting involved, let me know. Um, the other thing we are looking at doing on the PR side of things is a bit of a stunt when the website first goes live is um, we are looking at having a 3D section of the website. So there will be a section of the website you can log on to where there will be lots of stunning images and the views you can see from sustainable transport. So we've got some lovely shots off um, some of the Wind Bay Lake cruises, some open top buses, and those will be in 3D. I'm going to send 3D glasses out to quite a lot of the, um, the press who we think might be interested so that they can access the website and actually see more, see what it would be like to be sat on top of that open top bus. It's a bit of a gimmick, but we're hoping it might be happen. <coughs> so, uh, <coughs> so the awareness event is another key thing you can get involved in. That will happen on the 29th of July. It kicks off with the <coughs> Go Cycle, Go Walk, Go Lakes Festival, which is um, the cycling festival that I touched on earlier. This is taking place in Stavely. It's a new development as part of the programme. And it's basically a free day where people can come along, find out more about, tra well, the main focus is cycling, um, walking, but anything else sustainable, there's lots of information, there's lots going on, I think we've got stunt bikes and all sorts, guided walks, and they're all free activities, so if you want to push that, if anybody's staying with you in those times, then it's a good free event for people to go to. Um, we're looking for anybody during that week who has any events they think might be relevant that we could promote <coughs> in the package. We're also looking for people who have any added value offers or potential discounts that they offer currently or would be interested in offering just for a week for people who do travel sustainably. Um, we've got people like Morgan Hall involved who are giving two for one entry for anybody who arrives with a bus ticket to promote or a train ticket to up to the key ways that people can actually get them sustainably. And um, for anything like that, during those weeks we'll have pop-up information centres that will be around six key locations. That's right, isn't it? <laughs> and uh, we'll be catching people who are there and saying, well, why don't you take a sustainable day out and these are the things that you can do. These are the things that you can get by doing that for this week. Um, and the pop-up travel information centres, I mean, we're looking at some of the key hubs where people do make transport decisions. So in the middle of cruise, I kindly agreed to having one down at Lakeside. Because again, it's a great place where people can make decisions in terms of getting on the boat and spend the day going up and down around the lake. Or they can go on Lake Side Housewake Lake Railway. There's a free bus of the summer that goes around the South Lakes area. And there's also a free bus to the Lake Motor Museum. So it's a really good point to catch people and say, well, you don't need to get back in the car. You can spend the rest of the day without it. Um, again, that week is going to be promoted by radio advertisement by radio. Um, we've got some online advertising going out and we've got some posters going up. If you go to www.promotrading.org, that's where most of the information will be posted about the marketing for the project and the toolkit and everything. If you keep an eye on that, you'll be able to see as things get posted up there, but we'll try and keep you informed through other means as well. And if you sign up for Claire's newsletters, then you'll get bulletins on what's happening as well through there. And if you do want to get involved in anything, then just contact myself. It's Gemma Proctor at promotrading.org, so uh, I'm be happy to hear from you. Together that's built around sustainability, which you book, and if you book this particular brand we've got here, it automatically gives you uh, one day's free travel around the lakes via lakes passes. So all your links in, so you buy the product, you arrive, and in your room is your pass ticket, and off you go. That's your one day of sustainable transport. Uh, links in again, then we also then reward them with free tours, and it gives them discounts to different areas. We then look at, uh, okay, well we've got one feed based pass, but the next day they might want to go off and do a walk, which will involve their car unfortunately. Fine, but we'll reward you, yes you can do that, and we'll give you a free pack lunch that comes in a sustainable pack lunch pack that's got everything in it, and off you go. So there's your boots covered. So we built that in, and it sort of launched this summer really, uh, and there's been a slow uptake. But I'm sure as, as we start marketing the same products as you are, that will grow and grow in time. We're actually finding people switch on arrival because they didn't know about it. 
but that's all the other thing to do. The also unique was for ourselves, we've got a membership, and this sort of, I pushed English lakes for this side of it. Sorry for those in the sea, I'll be able to pull set uh, Green Tourism Business Scheme was my sort of uptake with them about six years ago. Uh, came through. Uh, we started off at Lowen Bay, and now it's throughout the company as a group. Uh, four of us are golds and the other two are silvers. Uh, and we pushed that on through in, in 12 months throughout the company. Other areas, we have a responsibility, us as businesses. We don't quite just leave it to go late. Everybody else that gets the funding, we have our own responsibilities to look at. So we have our own corporate, corporate social responsibility, which outlines things uh, from what we do as a company. So it looks at energy policies and other areas, and transport comes into that, which is in this bit here. So our corporate, corporate social responsibility, Relating to tourism, we're saying, okay, well, what are you doing before you set off? So, how are you going to get to us? Are you going to go, and as everyone does, that's a lake. So, let's go to Lake District, the London, that's across on the train. No, 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 else, great. And they bring this dirt lady box with a brand new set of walking boots in, and then leave it in my hotel room, and I'm going to go and pay for it to get it lifted. So, silly things like that. And we do it right away through the whole stay. You know, what can you do? And then when you're going home, you know, you'll go ahead and buy stuff in the local shops and hopefully you'll go home. We're on about the, the contribution, not to Lake when you go. But also, when you get home again, you continue to do that. So we look at those areas. We don't think, and this is my theory now, because I said this all outside. As far as I'm concerned, every visitor is an alien from Mars. They come to the Lake District, they leave the brains at home. So we have to educate them, right from start to finish. There's not any tourists in here, is there? <laughs> <laughs> so we have to educate from start to finish, even to the point, again, we've got the booking system, what are you going to do while you're here? How are you going to book? Uh, we'd like them to uh, explore the area, but let's use all these modern parts of transport. I think we have a great transport system in the Cumbria, and they all do link together. It's just knowing and telling people how they link, which go links and they'll do. We also then have the usual stuff we're in their bedrooms, which is turn off lighting and other things, so it all links in. But I looked at it from a visitor experience and the old uh, aliens. So we have a thing in the bedrooms which tells them everything relating to green tourism, and that's the whole scope next to each bedroom. I was involved quite a few years ago, right at the start really, with the Fresh Air is Free campaign, which I love got involved in. Uh, and we came up with an idea at uh, Lowood at the time, which was to hang up car keys. So when guests hang up their physical car keys, they get a discount. And it's within the restaurant and different things. Success rate on that, don't see a lot of car keys. But it's there. You know, it's, you offer it, it's up to them to do. But then I thought, okay, well there's other areas we can look at them. So the Green Tourism, we've got a membership in with there. We have the seatbelt as well. We're obviously now looking to help support the Drive Less See More campaign. I love the app, I think it's brilliant. I saw it for the first time last week. It needs a bit of work in certain areas. Great for walks, but there's nowhere to tell you where to walk. Tip. But yeah, we did different areas there to look to see what we're doing and how we can support. So starting right at the beginning, the Fresh Air Free campaign, we have this within all our bedrooms. It's highlighted throughout. And this was developed uh, with the help of Nurture Lakeland. Uh, we have it, specific, specific ones are lowered. So again, like I say, if you hang up your car keys at reception, we'll then give you automatic discounts to different things in certain areas. It's great, it's the first stumbling block, they've got to get in their car to drive to get to that place at Lowood, we're in the middle of the A591. We have a bus stop, or we have an unofficial bus stop, you stop your hand up. So we then looked at different things to do there, and how we would solve these problems. We thought of the car free areas, what can you do, how can you get from Langwood car free? It's all walking by bus at the moment, but there's still a problem. We want them to go and explore Ambleside, we want them to do other things, look at the area. Ambleside's got so much to offer, and so is Boness, we have the same alternatives for them. Still, they're getting in different forms of transport. So we came up with the idea, we spoke with uh, Windermere Lakes Cruises a long time ago, uh, they already had a sort of similar bus in operation. It's a water bus service, not normal. 
So we came up with a water bus service. Uh, we have a nice cannon and a nice brand new jetty. Uh, so it's the best bus stop I've got looking. <laughs> they linked in and we trialled it for the first season about four years ago, I think it was. Uh, so it's just went from, turned around, stopped in with us, went to Ambleside, went to Ray Castle, and then came back round again. So it was quite a short route. I think it's now called the uh, Green Service. Run through, is that correct? Yeah. It stands all the way through. Uh, the two boats that come through, this is the, the prettiest one, I think. Uh, I love the boats. It comes into the hotel. We literally tell guests, yes, yeah, there's a free service at 10, uh, 9 30, 10 30, and 11, or they can request it. They can ring up and they'll come through. But it's free. So that was the solution. Okay, it's not free to me, but to the customer it's free. Uh, uh, it's a good, good used service in the hotel. So there is a cost, there's an onward discount, so we give them a little ticket, uh, and then they get discount on the uh, full services around the lakes. So it gives them another bit again. The reward, I put reward, the reward's for me, not the customer, because I've achieved something. I've managed to get two or three cars in there, and I, I can get to work with less people trundling through to work. That's always a thing with me. I, I'm the same with everybody else. It's great coming to work. We, we can work at 7 o'clock and see no traffic. But outside my hotel, stream of it. There is a cost, and it cost me just under 17, that was 17,000. Couldn't be an excuse's wish. <laughs> but 1,700 a year. Uh, this year is the first time we sort of looked at extending it again. And we're now doing a full round circuit, so it'll cost me a bit more. Uh, but the more I get people using it, the other reward is yes, there's a car free, but it also rewards the customer because it's an added experience. <coughs> they don't get that experience. Yes, it's good not to them. They're out there on the lake, you know. We then look to other areas. I think I have the prettiest bus stop in Cumbria. I campaigned for this and I got it as an official bus stop last year. Uh, it was brilliant. So I think I do have the best looking bus stop in Cumbria. Which we're trying to see if there is a competition for the best looking bus stop. Uh, but yeah, we're linked in with those. The 555 can go past the hotel for a of years. People use it very regularly, the staff do. Uh, and obviously now there's development of the uh, bike, bike and ride system. So we encourage them to do it. So now, my piece of paper is, yes, it's a car free day, because we've come over those stumbling blocks. There's more we're working on, so these are the other things we do. From my point of view, sustainable holidays, that's what it's all about. Uh, which links in with everywhere, it does drive in with drive less, see more. Uh, and it comes down, this is me being personal from a hotelier's point of view now, uh, green tourism and everything else, and thinking about green tourism and energies. It is a cost saving exercise in certain areas but there's a lot of reward. And I think there'll be a lot of reward from this and it'll be as Cumbria being known as somewhere you can get around but it's not costing you a fortune in your car. And that's the biggest thing in the moment. We use a lot of the hotel and I try and train my staff and these are little bits I picked up when I wrote this down last night. I've got a brilliant strap line after this with the staff. So I thought well, I've got boots yeah, boots. What do you do boots? Well, I've got the best countryside on my doorstep. We offer walks to everybody, you know, visual walks on a piece of paper, which I can now hopefully get on this app, so they can go up. Uh, they can, they're able to access all walks by also public transport as well. Public transport's right outside my doorstep. Bikes. Uh, we looked at the electric bike scheme and other things and offering bikes. But we do offer a uh, room plus free bike storage and cleaning service. It's never really been... Well, people do take it up. I have a big room outside of there, so it's always full of bikes. Uh, fortunately, no one's asked for it to be cleaned yet. <laughs> <laughs> but it's an added service that's there. Attractions, uh, we get the staff, plus we also want people to embrace and promote green attractions. And the hang of the car keys section we use a lot in the hotel. It's hard with different staffing and knowledge and speech. Uh, but the way you do it is actually get them to experience it themselves. Uh, so we get staff to advertise, recommend, and we need to educate visitors 
and it also all adds up to an added value for the customer. And that's how we see it. Uh, and yes, it may cost me, but the customer will come back. We see a lot more now, the more we do, especially the bus service, the more hits I get on TripAdvisor relating to the bus, water bus service. is amazing. They pull through to, oh, that's good, what's that? So it's a helping conversion tool. Reward, it's membership.